So another thing I want to show you guys, and that is going to be a very interesting thing. That is something that I was maybe even most excited about when I saw it first, is that in the Geometry Node tab, we now have a little button here that is called Modifier. And that was not there before. All right, so what this does is if you select it, there's now an option for tool. Hmm, what does that mean? Well, let's try this out. And this is a lot of fun. And this is going to be incredibly helpful for, I think, all of us. And we may even be able to add that to the Blender Universe plugin. And that is going to be something that is just incredible, right? So let's add a new cube. Let's go to tool. And now we're going to create a new geometry node, right? So this is now a tool instead of an actual geometry node tree that we will be using on this object. And I'm going to name this, for example, extrude. All right, and I'm going to press F3 and search for an extrude mesh, place it in between. And now this tool actually extrudes our mesh outwards. So how do we use that? Well, let's go back to our actual object node. Right, and this is not actually got this geometry node tree. This is just a tool we created, okay? Don't worry about it. It's not linked to this object whatsoever. But if we now go into edit mode and we create a little bit of a bigger window here, we have a little small button here at the top, this blank page button. If we click that, we can see that there is one tool that is called extrude. And what happens if we click on that? It's going to perform our geometry node setup that is called extrude, right? That is just amazing, right? So with just one click, we can just do this again, extrude all the phases outwards, extrude them again, extrude them again, right? So you can create your own tools for geometry nodes now, and they can get incredibly advanced very quickly, right? So any action you want to do here, you can do with these, right? And something that I, the first thing that I thought of about using is smoothening our mesh, for example, right? There is a very easy way to do that with a modifier, a smooth modifier. But if you want to do it quickly in your mesh without having to use modifiers, you can just use a little tool that you set up yourself. For example, let's simplify this a few times. I have to get used to, uh, to this stuff. Let's simplify this, for example, four times. There we go. Let's go to sculpt mode and let's make some beautiful little bubbly things here. There we go. Amazing. Amazing. There we go. This is now our beautiful object. Here we go. And shade that smooth. And I'm going to make a new tool. So let's just hit the new button here. There we go. And let's call this smoothen perhaps, smoothen the mesh, right? So how do we smoothen something? We can press F3 and search for an edge. Let's say, what is it called? Edges of vertices, is that it? No, I hate that the search function is now gone. Edge, hmm, edge vertices, yeah, this one, edge vertices. So we have a position one and a two and we can get the distance between the two. There we go. And we can now divide that by two. So a math multiply by 0.5, right? So that is basically how you get the, um, well, get the average of something, right? The average of two numbers or two vectors. As you add them together, you divide it by two and you get like the middle point, right? Where they meet. So this will now be the new kind of, um, distance, position, right? So if we now hit Shift A or F3 and search for a set position right there, and we can now just tweak that position with the offset or with this little new distance, I guess. All right, so I think this should be it if I'm not wrong. I may be, but we'll be, we'll be figuring that out. All right, so if we now go to edit mode and set this to be smoothen, uh, let's see if it's actually smoothens. It may actually do the inverse. Maybe we need the position here. Let's see. All right. So my uh, node setup may not completely be right here. I think we may need a, di a different node than a distance, but you get the idea. And I'll show this with 
maybe something else. Like, if we have, and this is going to be a fun one, actually. If we have a little curve, for example, we have a Bezier curve here, we can do pretty much anything we want with this. And let's just turn this into um, something easy because... Um, yeah, something easy. Let's just do Shift A or F3 and let's search for a curve to mesh. Swipe that in between, drag this out, and let's make this a curve circle. There we go, with a resolution of like six. Beautiful. Right, so if we now apply this, it will basically give our curve circle some thickness, right? And if you want to visualize how this works first, we can just Control X this, go to the Modify panel, add a new node system, and, well, it doesn't let us paste here. Beautiful. So let's just drag this out real quick. Curve to mesh. Connect that up here. All right. And there we go. Our profile curve, curve circle. There we go. All right. So now we can visualize what we are doing first, for example, instead of actually doing it as a tool first. All right. So we can just turn this into an actual mesh. And we can even set the curve radius, set curve radius. Here we go. And we can make the radius be a spline parameter. And that way we can actually turn this into, for example, a hair strand or whatever this is, some kind of spiky bit or a leaf of grass. If you zoom in all the way, doesn't really matter. But this is something we could use into our actual tool. Right, so uh, this is a setup that we can now use perfectly. So if we now go back to the tool modifier and we add a new one and we will just create the same kind of setup that we had before. I'm not sure why it doesn't let me paste this from our actual modifier. Let's try that again and just use right mouse and copy. All right, it should just be the same thing. There we go, easy as that. Let's delete the input here and the output there. This is now our new tool that we call Hairify. I typed that wrong, didn't I? Hairify. It doesn't matter. Um, so now if we go to edit mode and we remove this modifier and we can just draw any curve that we want. All right. We can even draw an additional one or make a little heart for you guys. They're beautiful, beautiful heart. We can now go into our section. Uh, where is this actually? Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, so it looks like this does not yet work with curves. Hmm. Interesting. Well, the more you know, I think Blender still needs to do some, some kind of tweaks, but you know, doesn't matter. We'll work around it. Let's convert this back to a mesh. There we go. And then we can just add a little mesh to curve here, right? There's nothing we can't do with some workarounds. Mesh to curve in between. And now if we go to edit modes and we should now just be able to still use that. Harify, beautiful, <laughs> right? So it is a little bit of a workaround now that we can't use it in the curves, but it still works nice. Right, so, and now we can just go into a new object, mesh, plane, right, and just merge everything together and just extrude this a few time. Let's say we want to have this shape, amazing. And if you want this to be the hair, use Hairify, beautiful, right? As easy as that. Now just add a little subdivision modifier and you'll have a beautiful hair, right? Or a beautiful, whatever this is, right? You can, you can imagine all all the things you want with it. But what I'm trying to show is the power of this tool, right? If you don't feel like adding a geometry node every single time, if you have to do something like this, then you can create your own custom tools. They will be saved and you will always be able to access them here in your edit tool. And you can just imagine all the repetitive stuff in edit mode that you will have to do yourself that you just don't want to do ever again. Just make a geometry node set out of it one more time and you'll be able to access this whenever you want, okay? And another thing I could think of is to wireframe it, right, without having to use the actual modifier, and we can even create more beautiful wireframes in Geometry Node tools. 
And that's just something that we can just do with this. All right, so tools is the new best thing, I believe, next to the repeat zone, of course. All right, so this is where I'm going to cut this section off of Blender 4.0. And next tutorial, I would like to continue on that and maybe even include a little bit of insights in Blender 4.1. All right, there's one more thing that I really want to talk about, and it is light linking. Something incredibly useful for especially product design, in my opinion. And I'll explain all about that in the next video when we get more into lights as well. Um, so let's just talk more about Blender 4.0 then and 4.1. So we get up to date and crank all those new updates into our system. Stuff like this, the edit tools, is something that we just need in our system. Something that you should learn right away to make your own lives easier when modeling. Um, are there any questions about that? No questions, huh? Well, that's fine. That's totally fine. Then if there are no more questions, I will end it here. And, well, prepare for our next week. Install Blender 4.0 beta. Yes, not alpha. You need beta. And follow this tutorial. And next time, let's get into the lights because it is going to be very, very, very interesting and very nice to get to the lighting results that we always wanted. Okay, so I'm going to say goodbye now. And thank you all for tuning in.